three minutes. Just to let you know, we're not going to be uh, recommending a restaurant for a gathering because we have new members, but if y'all want to go out, that's fine. Today is uh, Buddy Barrel Sunday, so if y'all have an offering for Buddy Barrel, you can see boys and girls. Sir. I don't know about the socially distant stuff. Sorry. today. Amen. He is good. Amen. For you are good and your mercy endureth forever. And he knows, he knows those who take refuge in him. Yes. 
Oh, we thank you for that, Lord. We praise you for that promise. Lord, you know us as we take our refuge in you. You know everything about us. You know all of the situations that are distressing us today. Lord, we roll that over on you. We receive, uh, Lord, the relief from that stress. We see, receive your peace into our lives. Thank you, Lord, for that peace as we rest in you, Lord God, because you are a good God. The Lord is good. Amen. Lord, we ask that you would help us today to, to get that fixed firmly in our minds that you are so good and that, Lord, we can, we can trade our sorrows, we can trade our sickness, we can trade all of our stress, and, Lord, receive from you the blessings that you want to pour into our lives. Let your Holy Spirit touch us in a mighty way this morning, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we thank you. We praise you for doing it. Amen. 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 I trade my sorrows. I trade my shame. I lay them down for the joy of the
time of need. Lord, as we are in this place this morning, we come with a sense of victory. Lord, we come boldly because of the blood of Jesus that has purchased a way for us, and we come into the, uh, into the holy of holies. Lord, we, we bring our needs to you, knowing that you care about every single situation. Lord, we ask that you would touch. Lord, we ask that you'd move in every single one, one of our prayer requests. God, you know them. You see them. Lord, for families that have lost loved ones this week, we ask for comfort in the name of Jesus. Lord, for those that are struggling with sickness, even cancer, 
Lord, we ask that you bring healing in the name of Jesus for a nation that's torn apart by violence and injustice. Lord, we pray for healing. Lord, we pray that there would be a, a, a concert of prayer that would flow to the throne of God saying, God, please have mercy on this nation. Lord, turn us back to you. Lord, turn our hearts back to the one who can heal us. Lord, turn us back to the one who started this country, whose hand has been upon this country, who has preserved this nation. Oh, God, so many have turned away from you. So many raise a fist towards you. But God, we raise open hands and say, God, please, please let your, your grace, oh, your mercy flow into us as individuals as well as a people. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would touch, that, Lord, you would move in the leadership of this nation. God, that you would help them to have wisdom. God, humble them, humble them until they fall on their knees and say, God, we need your wisdom. Lord, we pray for those who keep this, this nation operating. Lord, all of the first responders, law enforcement, firefighters, paramedics, rescue workers. Father, we pray for them. We pray for our military who are overseas and, and, and here in the United States. God, we pray that your hand would be upon them. Lord, all of these. Lord, we pray for their families. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would touch first responders, military, Lord, all of their families, and that, Lord, they would lift up their eyes to you and say, God, you're the only one. You're the only one that can watch over me. You're the only one that can watch over my loved one. Oh, God, that we would come to a complete dependence upon you in Jesus' name. Oh, complete dependence on you because you are the one who wears the victor's crown. Oh, thank you for that, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that every situation that we have on our prayer list, that, Lord, we have victory through you. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would touch Lord, that you would minister, Lord God, in, in our state, in the state of Georgia. Lord, on our prayer list this morning, we have Sister Gabe Wall listed as our children's ministries director for the state of Georgia. And found out a couple of days ago that she's retiring. So, Lord, I pray that you be with her in her retirement, but that, God, you would overshadow this state to see another children's minister raised up that can coordinate the children's ministry of all of the state of Georgia that can work with what we see here this morning, Buddy Barrel, BGMC. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would touch, Lord God, in, in the Georgia district of the Assemblies of God. Lord, we ask that you would touch and that you would heal, Lord God, that you would heal, Lord, not just bodies, but our emotions. Lord, over the past few months, our, our souls have been torn by all the things going on. And, and as we turn on the news today, Lord, we are just devastated at the things that we see, the violence, the, the burning, the looting, all of that that goes with it. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that, Lord, you turn our nation and heal our hearts. Oh, God, heal our land, we pray, in the name of Jesus, not just from COVID-19, but, Lord, heal our nation from racial hatred, Heal our nation, Lord God, from images of police brutality. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would touch us. And Lord, bring us back to you. Lord, that you would bring us back to you. Lord, that's where the healing takes place. Lord, it's in your presence. Father, have your way in our hearts and lives, we pray. Touching our missionaries as they labor for you. Lord, both overseas and right here in the United States. Lord, continue to do a work. We ask it in Jesus' name. We thank you for doing it. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We continue to worship the Lord this morning as we give you an opportunity to give to the Lord. Thank you for being so generous in your tithes and offerings. I want to ask uh, if you want to give this morning. Uh, Brother Don Smith is going to have a basket for you. There's also one in the back. If you need him to come to you, just kind of wave your hand. He'll come to you. 
uh, and uh, we appreciate your generosity. Uh, also, you can give online. You can give by texting. Just a lot of different ways that you can give. Uh, but we appreciate your uh, generous giving uh, to the church to help us to maintain uh, our, our giving. Amen. Our, our ministries. Amen. As we uh, think about upcoming things uh, today, uh, we have five uh, member applicants to the church, and we're going to have lunch afterward. So guys got pizza on the way and all that kind of stuff, and uh, we're going to have a great time uh, having a membership uh, orientation class. Uh, also, you'll see uh, Brother Daryl around snapping pictures. Uh, I asked him uh, two things, if he get candid shots of things that are going on, and also if you could pose for him, I guess, in the foyer so he can get individual shots as well as uh, new family shots if you'd like to do that so that we can have the most up-to-date up uh, photos of, of all of you that we can include in our directory. Amen. Uh, also today, if you want to go with me to the uh, nursing home, uh, I'm going to go over there at 2.30, be there at, uh, at the front entrance at 2.30. Uh, Sister Patsy suggested that we could uh, take and make some signs and saying we're praying for you or we, we love you, we miss you, or whatever you want to say. Uh, we're going to go around, I think, to the outside of the nursing home and try and minister. If you want to try and go with us, this is kind of a, 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 a dry run trying to figure out what this is like. And uh, if you'd like to come, I encourage you to do that. Amen. Next Sunday, after the morning service, we're going to have a fellowship at Meeks Park. Uh, and uh, it's supposed to be for my birthday, but we know it's just to have a great time in the Lord. Uh, so, because uh, we don't want to celebrate the pastor getting more old and decrepit. Um, but uh, this has been a rough week for me. And uh, anyway, uh, I uh, appreciate your sentiment, but uh, we just want to have a good time in the Lord. You can see the other things that are coming up. Father's Day is coming up. Everybody remembers that, right? Father's got to honor dad. Uh, graduation celebration coming up at the end of the month. And uh, then at the end of the month, we're also going to bring in our new members. Looking forward to that as well. Amen. Uh, so uh, I, I appreciate you uh, being faithful in, in all the different activities that we have. Uh, thank you so much for being a blessing. Amen. We're going to receive our tithes and offerings this morning. Uh, go to the next slide because I'm not sure what's next after this. Oh, yeah. Don't forget to recommend Facebook and YouTube to people. Uh, tell them that our broadcast is on Facebook and YouTube or there's a link uh, from Facebook. Uh, and also take uh, advantage of uh, Right Now Media and Faith Life. If you have any questions about that, uh, get with me and we'll make sure and get you set up on that. Amen. Um, before we receive the offering this morning, uh, I, Brother Jay, would you ask God's blessing on the offering, sir? Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful for your grace, for your love for this church. Lord, you have kept us in the palm of your hand all these months, and Lord, we are doing all right. So we thank you, Father, for that. Thank you want, Brother Don, to pick up from you, just wave your hand, he'll come and get it for you, from you. Oh, my God. 
You overcame. Oh, we thank you for that, Lord. We praise you for that. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for the victory, Lord. Thank you for the victory, Lord Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, worship team. Thank you so much for your ministry this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise God for the victory. Praise God for the victory. This has been kind of a different sort of year, hasn't it been? Amen? We started off the year uh, with prayer and fasting. And just to let you know, I've uh, set some more time for prayer and fasting uh, like the second week in July from the 12th through the 18th. That's a Sunday through Saturday. Uh, on that Sunday, we'll meet here at 5 o'clock. And then uh, the rest of the week, we'll meet at 11 o'clock for uh, prayer each day. And, and so I encourage you to plan on, uh, put that on your calendar, uh, July 12th through the 18th, another week of prayer and fasting. But we began this year with prayer and fasting. And also we were considering images that the Lord kind of laid on our heart. And, and, and we realize that it's not unusual for God to speak through images. He, he's done that many times in the Word of God. Jesus himself liked to use images. He'd say, look at this. Now I want you to look at this bread. And I want you to realize this is my body broken for you. He said, I want you to see this cup. This cup is the new covenant that's brought in through my blood. He used images. He said, I want you to see this widow here. She has put in a couple of pennies, but she put in everything she had. She loves God so much, she gave all. Think about that image. Get that image burned into your mind. And of course, as Jesus healed the sick, as he touched deaf ears, opened blind eyes, as he healed the lepers, as he made the lame to walk, boy, talk about powerful images. God was speaking through that. This is Messiah. This is the one you've been looking for. I have to admit, I've been kind of excited. Uh, we have been watching. We, we subscribed to Pure Flix. Uh, we've got so much streaming media now, we can't possibly see a hundredth of it, a thousandth of it. But uh, I've been watching a series called The Chosen. And uh, I cannot recommend it strongly enough. It, it, you might can get that on DVD, but I encourage you to find it. It's called The Chosen, and, and it's a diatessaron. For those of you who are familiar with that word, it means through four. Uh, the whole four Gospels blended together to tell one story. And they're doing it uh, in a series format rather than just one big movie. And it gives more time 
to develop the characters. And it has been amazing. And uh, we're, we're just about to see the last episode of the first season. And uh, I'm waiting for the second season, but it's still in production. And they're doing this, amazingly enough, on a crowdfunding basis. Uh, the person that's uh, producing this, that's directing this, his name is Dallas Jenkins. Uh, those of you who may recall the name Jenkins, Jenkins, Jenkins. Yeah, he wrote the Left Behind series. No, it's his son. It's the son that is, uh, is directing this, The Chosen, but the father did the Left Behind series with Tim LaHaye. So some of you may remember that. But uh, it's, I highly recommend it. Definitely do. Uh, but, you know, as I've been thinking about the year and the images that God is giving to us, and, and The Chosen just leaves images in my mind, I can tell you, uh, of different things. They, they do a great job of portraying the miracles of Jesus. But uh, obviously, you can see all the images that are on the screen. These are the images that we uh, looked at at the beginning of the year uh, and thought about what is God saying through them. And uh, some of them came uh, from images that I saw at the end of last year. In December, the Georgia uh, Assemblies of God had a uh, prayer meeting at Amicola Falls State Park, and I went to the sessions of that and our district pastor, uh, Dr. Uh, Merrill, said that the Lord had spoken to him in the past through images, and he felt, felt like the Lord wanted to speak to us through images. And it really resonated with me, but especially these middle two images. That top image, the wrecking ball. And, and if you may recall... Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I challenged us not to hate the wrecking ball. I know that's hard. Don't hate it. Instead, embrace it. It's a whole lot easier to embrace it. It's, it's kind of like what Jesus said. Jesus said, either you fall on the rock or the rock falls on you. Which, which way do you want it? One way or the other, you're going to have an encounter with the rock. And if you embrace that wrecking ball, if you embrace what God is doing in your life, I think that it will be a whole lot easier than trying to rail against it. No, I don't want this. There's been a lot of that this year. Amen. A lot of that this year. And, and I'll tell you, I'm still struggling to embrace God's wrecking ball in my life. But God wants to tear out some things, some, some things that I really like, some things I'm really comfortable with, and he wants to replace them. But there's not going to be any new thing done until the old is torn out. And, and the harder I hold on to that old stuff, the more it's going to hurt. But God wants us to embrace that new thing, that better thing that he wants to do in our life. God told Israel in Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 and 19, he said, Do not call to mind the former things or ponder things of the past. Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? He wants to do that new thing. In our lives. He wants to do that new work. And the question is, is will we embrace it or will we resist it? Because the reality is, is that we desperately need that new thing that God is going to do in our, in our lives. We need that new thing to continue to go through this COVID-19 crisis. We need that new thing that God wants to do in our lives to be able to get through the, the now the pre police brutality, uh, racial injustice crisis that our nation is going through. We need a new mindset. We need a new anointing. We need something fresh to be able to accomplish what God wants us to accomplish right now. Amen. And to do it, God's going to have to tear some things out of our lives. I, I know that's shouting ground. I know you all are excited. Yay! Yes, God, bring it on! Tear it out! 
like to say, you can embrace it, you can embrace the rock, or the rock can fall on you. Totally our choice. Because like hide and seek that we play as a children, ready or not, it's here. At the beginning of the year, Brother Daryl Crouch gave me a book entitled Vessels of Fire and, Glo and Glory. And in it, evangelist Mario Marillo, he's been around ever since I, I got saved. I, I remember hearing him when I first got saved. But he encourages us to be willing to see this nation torn apart. I, for veterans, I know that's a hard thing. Some of you fought in Vietnam, fought in other conflicts, and it's hard to see this nation torn apart like it is. It's hard for all of us who believe in this nation, believe that God established this nation to watch what's going on. But if we're honest, we know that this nation is not the nation of our founding fathers. This is not a nation that even though it's our motto, in God we trust, we don't trust God. The reality is, instead, this nation is a nation at war with God. We're at war with his word, with his, pro with his principles. We're at war with Christianity that would proclaim without any uh, uh, hesitation the cross of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the, the, the soulness of salvation through Jesus. Jesus only is salvation. The, the, this nation doesn't want to hear that. But that's what our nation was founded on. So this nation is not the nation of our founding fathers. And what has arisen in its place needs to suffer destruction. I'm sorry, it just does. Maybe even Christians might wake up and say, we need to pray. Our nation is going down the toilet. Maybe we need to pray. Maybe our nation is in trouble. Maybe I can't run on autopilot anymore. I've got to fast and pray and seek God and cry out to him. Because our nation is in trouble. But even in the midst of that, I believe that God can do a new work. I like what Marillo says, Brother Crouch. He said back in the 70s, and, and, and that's when he kind of cut his teeth on preaching the gospel. He saw the hippies turn into Jesus people. Some, some, of, you may, some of you may have been them. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> and, and he talks about how that you know, they'd sit around, kumbaya, you know, just acoustic sounds, you know, soft singing, peace out, man. That was the 70s. This is the 2020s. Now they're screaming, burning, looting. Those are the ones that God wants to bring in. And, and it was amazing. I, I was reading this in Marillo's book, and then this morning I opened up Facebook. Uh, there's a site called Assemblies of God Ministers and Adherents to find that there was a church in Richmond, Virginia, that while there was a protest rally going on across the street, they gathered not to join with them, thank God. There are so many Christians that have lost their way. They've lost their mind. They don't know how to respond to this. Well, we need to get in there. No, no, no. We're not joining them in the protest. We're not burning. We're not looting. We're not going to do that stuff. Instead, we're going to do what the church is supposed to do. We're going to pray. That church gathered big crowd. They started singing worship songs to the Lord. The protesters started complaining, you're too loud. Praise the Lord. And then they started getting saved. Got pictures. Got pictures. This, this man kneeling. My foot's hurting. That's why I was talking about this. is a, uh, a tough week for me. But I'll get down. 
And he is lifting up his eyes to the Lord as he has just gotten gloriously saved from being a protester and, 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 and screaming to crying out on Jesus with, with people gathered around him of every uh, race, praying for him, worshiping uh, God, praising God. Oh, that's rough. Uh, <clears throat> Praise God for that. They, they talk about a, a young woman who got slain in the spirit in the middle of the street. Hallelujah. That's what God wants to do. And, and it's tough. We're still on the uh, previous slide, by the way, that wrecking ball. We're going to have to watch things get ripped apart in order for God to do something better. The young people are not satisfied with religion as usual. God's going to apply the wrecking ball. He has been applying the wrecking ball. Now, here's, here's the tough part. There were a lot of churches back in the 70s that said, we don't want any of those hippies. Get your hair cut. Put on some shoes. Make sure you wear your three-piece suit before you come to church. But then there were churches that said, come in. Let me tell you about Jesus. Let me show you the things of the word. And those coarse, newly saved hippies turned into something different. The same thing can happen today. Those screamers, looters, burners, we've already seen in Richmond, getting saved, they can get saved and, and then will this church be willing to face the wrecking ball to remove the status quo so that we say, come on in. Let me tell you about Jesus. Let me tell you about what his word says. Let's just sit and read it together. Do you have questions? Let me point you to this passage because it goes right along with that passage. Comparing scripture with scripture. I'm not going to give you religion. I'm going to give you the word of God. I'm going to give you Jesus. Are we willing to see our status quo devastated in order to see that brought in? I pray that we are. Because at least for me, I am feeling just absolutely broken for souls to be saved. I had a district superintendent in, West, superintendent in West Florida who preached from Genesis chapter 30 and verse 1. It's a scripture where it says, where when Rachel saw that she bore Jacob no children, she became jealous of her sister and she said to Jacob, give me children or else I die. Give me children or else I die. And Jacob said, who do you think I am? I am not God. You go to him. But may we have the same heart that Rachel had for spiritual children. God, give us spiritual children or we will just die from sorrow, from disappointment. Oh, I pray the church would begin to have such a desire for souls being saved, to see these souls brought into the kingdom, and then to do what our text this morning is going to talk about, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 1, to see them pick up the faith. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, and starting with verse number 1, the scripture says, You therefore, my son... Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. 
Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. Lord, may we receive from it what you want to pour into our lives. And I thank you. I praise you for doing it in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember as you read this passage that Paul is writing his last letter. The Apostle Paul is headed for death at the hands of Caesar. He knows that his time is limited. Maybe even by the time that Timothy actually receives this letter, Paul has been killed. And so he's saying to Paul, excuse me, Paul is saying to Peter, Timothy, I want you to do for others what I did for you. I found you as a young man. And, and, and the Holy Spirit said, this is the one. Pour your life into him. And, and, and I was obedient to what the Holy Spirit said. I mean, don't take this wrong, Timothy, but when I first saw you, I thought, ain't nothing. Ain't never going to be nothing. But God saw something different. I was just obedient to God. My time is over. Now it's time for you to do the same thing that I did. You need to find some folks. You need to find some men and women. And you need to train them. You need to hand off the faith to them. Like that picture there of the two relay runners handing off. So today, if you go to that picture of the relay runners handing off, I'm sorry, media intensive is hard, isn't it? You need to be like this, handing off your faith to that one that's of the next generation. Amen. And Timothy, I know it's going to be hard. But here's how you do it. Be strong in the grace of that is in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Timothy, dear, here's how you do it. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. That's the only way you're going to be able to do it. Otherwise, disappointment will overwhelm you. Grace is this marvelous thing. We, we talked about this a little bit on Wednesday night in our Bible study. Grace reminds us of where we came from. So that instead of being haughty and looking down on somebody else, we say, well, I was right where you were. And somehow God took this lump of clay and he made it into a vessel of honor. I can't fathom it. As I think back on it, it's like, how in the world could this have happened? God, God did it. It was a miracle. And, and the people that bore with me, this coming Wednesday, we're going to talk about the concept of forbearance. How many people suffered <laughs> through the first time that I taught, the first time that I preached, the first time that I led worship, how many suffered? I mean, you're still suffering now. I'm sorry about that. But it was worse. And, and, and maybe, you know, as we're trying to pour our life into a young man or a young woman, how in the world? But God somehow worked on me. He can do it in them. Grace says, give them, cut them some slack. <laughs> They're not, not going to start out perfect. You ain't perfect yet. 
and you've been in a long time, they're probably further along than you are at that age. But God wants some revolutionaries. He wants to take some protesters. He, he wants to take some screamers. And he wants to turn them into his disciples. Amen. And one of the ways he's going to do that is through the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, when, when I look at this image, it'd be real easy for me to see that as a stick of dynamite. <laughs> Amen? Just stick a little fuse on there. Well, I, I wish I had better graphics. I'd just put a little fuse on there. But isn't that kind of like the way it is whenever we come into full contact with God? It's like God places a stick of dynamite, boom, and blows out. It wrecks our world. We're back to the wrecking ball, sorry. But the Holy Spirit totally reorders. How about that? That's, that's what dynamite does. It reorders things. And it does it in a rapid manner. <laughs> and God wants to do the th same thing in us. I, I don't know about you, but whenever the gospel came into my life, whenever the baptism of the Holy Spirit came into my life, it's like, whoa, boom! It changed me. It reordered my life in a short amount of time. And, and, and I can almost see Paul saying, Timothy, I want you to hand a stick of dynamite <laughs> to that next generation. They need it. They need what I want to do in their life. Put it in their hands. They need what the Holy Spirit is going to do in, their, in that life. So they can do what they need to do in this world. It's going to take something different than hippies singing Kumbaya to win this world to Jesus. That might have worked in the anti-Vietnam era. It's not going to work today. We're going to need some firebrands to minister in this world. We're going to need people that will get in their peers' face. Let me tell you about Jesus. Let me tell you what he can do in your life. He can set you free from that sexual immorality. Let, let me tell you about Jesus. He can set you free from that alcohol and other drugs that you depend upon to escape reality. He can set you free. He did it for me. He'll do it for you. They get right in their face. That, that's what it's going to take. And God is ready to do that. And he wants to use us in the process. Paul told Timothy in verse number two, the things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust these to faithful men, I'm going to say women also, faithful men and women who will be able to teach others also. The things which you've heard from me in the presence of many witnesses. Let's think about this for a minute. First of all, how many books are there in the Bible? I heard 66. 66 books in the whole Bible. How many of those books are the New Testament? 27. There's 39 the old, 27. Obviously, if you add two together, it ends up 66, right? <clears throat> of those 27 books, the Apostle Paul wrote either 13 or 14 of them, depending on how you want to feel about Hebrews. So as far as number of books go, he wrote half of the New Testament. But that's not the best measure, probably. How many words did he write compared to others? The, the one who wrote the most of the New Testament, take a guess, who was that? Who wrote most of the New Testament? Not Paul. I don't think I've heard it. Luke. Luke. Why? He wrote the gospel according to Luke, and he wrote Acts. 
a total of almost 38,000 words. But Paul's right behind him. Second place, 32,000 words, 28% of the New Testament. Paul is saying, I want you to take those 28,000 words, excuse me, 32,000 words that I wrote, because they're definitely established among many witnesses. And I want you to teach those truths to this next generation so that they'll be able to teach others also. Wow. What, what things did Paul talk about? If you've read the Pauline epistles, you know how extensively he wrote. He wrote, and I could use theological words, but I'm going to use simple words. He wrote about salvation through Jesus. He wrote about the church. We're about to have a class. I'm going to use some of the words of Paul to talk about what it means to be a member in the church. Remember, he, we're back to images again. He gave the image, it was a word picture, but he gave us the image of the human body. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he said, the church is like the human body. You, you can't say, hand, I have no need of you. Every part is absolutely essential. He, he wrote about marriage and sexuality. He wrote about end time things. He wrote about the old covenant and the new covenant. His teachings are just so extensive. He wrote about the Holy Spirit. He said, these are nine gifts that the Holy Spirit, gets. not everything, he didn't say this is the complete list that it can't be added to, take it away. No, he didn't say that. He said, this is nine gifts that the Holy Spirit gives. And then we read 1 Corinthians 14. This is how the gifts of the Spirit operate within the body of Christ. I mean, he taught so many things in those 13 or 14 epistles. And Paul is saying, now, these things that are established in front of many witnesses, you need to teach others so they can teach still more. Because the teachings of the Apostle Paul were inspired by the Holy Spirit. They were anointed by the Holy Spirit. And again, like dynamite, you get those teachings, those teachings of Paul down in your soul, they will reorder your world really quick. It'll explode. And so, Timothy, you need to give them my teachings because the Holy Spirit is the one who gave me the teachings. And the way that you do that is going to be through the grace of God. Because you're going to look at those young men and women and you say, faithful? I, I can't even get them to come to church once a week with any regular manner. What do you mean faithful? Be strong in the grace <laughs> that is in Christ Jesus. Amen? Be strong in the grace. Extend grace. Receive grace, bear with the failings of others as others have borne with your failings. As, as others bear with your failings. Pass the faith along. This morning, I want to ask us if we would to pray to pray that we would be faithful in finding other faithful individuals to pass along 
the teachings of the Holy Spirit. Paul may have said my teachings, but they were the teachings of the Holy Spirit. We need to find young men and women and pour our lives into them. And maybe we at the same time need to pray for grace. Grace that will give us the patience. Grace that will give us the ability to forgive. We need to pray for the grace that pours out the Holy Spirit on this whole process. Because our world needs Jesus. People need Jesus. And we have the ability to speak in the lives of so many but there's a generation out there that needs their own prophets to speak into them. But God wants to use us if we're willing to see the status quo wrecked with the wrecking ball so that they come in. May God make us willing. Let's pray. Father, we come to you asking in the name of Jesus that you would touch our hearts. Lord, we do often see your wrecking ball at work in our lives. And it is so painful that we want to resist it. But Lord, help us to realize what you're doing. That you're wrecking something in order to put something better in its place. Lord, help us be willing to accept what you're doing. Because if we're willing to accept your wrecking ball in our life, if we're willing to accept the pain of change in our life, that shows that maybe you can entrust us with this next generation. A generation that right now, they're out in the streets screaming, burning, looting. Everything is counterproductive to our society. They're doing it. But Lord, those are the ones you want to save. And you want to bring them in. And an insanity of insanities, you want to put them under our tutelage. May we be mentors to the next generation of firebrands to the next generation of prophets, to the next generation of evangelists, to the next generation that is so Holy Ghost fired up that they changed their world. Lord, we want to be a part of that. God, may we be like Rachel. Give us children. God, we got to have children. Spiritual children, physical children. God, bring them in. I thank you for children that that Sandra is teaching, Lord, may she pour Amen. the Holy Ghost into them. Amen. May she pour the teachings of the Holy Ghost, the Word of God into them. Lord, may we become something different than what we are because we are a world that needs Jesus. Lord, people need you so desperately. God, I pray that you'll help us to see that need, to fall on our knees and pray, to rise up after times of prayer and begin to go out and win the lost. In Jesus' name. Because Jesus is the answer for the world today.
Allah is not a way. He is a false way. Buddhism is not a way. Buddhism is a false way. A false God. Lord, help us who have had the truth revealed to us to be faithful witnesses that there's no other name given under heaven whereby men and women and children must be saved. Lord, may we give faithful witness to that truth. Father, I thank you that this is a church full of people willing to embrace the wrecking ball. Amen. Because we want to see souls. We want to see the lost brought in. Oh, Father God, help us. Help us to see the status quo leveled and something better, more powerful put in its place. Lord, we thank you. We praise you for doing it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, member applicants, we're going to gather in the fellowship.